Hello, dear friends. Welcome. This is Maxine Taylor, America's first licensed astrologer. And I have the November astrological overview, which I will give you in just a minute. Uh, before the, that, though, I want to mention uh, for those of you who have asked, yes, I am offering astrological mentoring. For those of you who want to study astrology, either for yourself or because you'd like to be a professional astrologer, um, I have a few slots left. This is a very unique approach. It's personal. It's one-on-one -on -one with me. Um, what I suggest that you do if you would like to study astrology with me, um, and it's more than a class, it's a whole mentoring uh, arrangement. I'm going to teach you everything I know, and I'm going to encourage you to move forward and express your dream and release the hidden astrologer within you. So if you're interested, just go to my website, maxinetaylor.com. All the information is there. And if you still have questions after that, shoot me an email or give me a call, okay? All right, now let's talk about November. There's so much going on in November. Excuse me, some of you know I have a cat and that means there's always cat fur. <laughs> so, excuse me, please. All right, um, daylight savings time ends um, either the 7th or the 6th, uh, depending on where you live in the United States. Um, now, Arizona and Hawaii do not observe daylight time. However, the rest of us will go back to standard time, which is really cool. I miss it. I miss it. Okay, that's the first change. Mercury which was retrograde last month, has moved into the shadow of the retrograde or moved into the shadow when it went direct. Mercury comes out of the shadow of the retrograde on November 2nd. This is a big day. Um, when uh, Mercury's in the shadow of the retrograde, it feels like Mercury's retrograde. Hasn't it felt that way? Things are discombobulated. When it moves out of the shadow, things go back to the new normal. All right. However, on November 18th, Venus enters the shadow of the retrograde. In other words, those of you who are familiar with my videos on YouTube know that I have um, a, a video out called Mercury Retrograde, the prequel and the sequel. Before Mercury goes retrograde, before every planet, except for the sun and the moon, goes retrograde, it moves into the shadow of the retrograde. It's kind of like an announcement. Um, for the slower moving planets, that shadow can take a while. Okay, then it goes retrograde, then it goes direct, meaning it comes out of retrograde, and it immediately moves into the shadow. I like that because it's kind of like a second chance at tying up loose ends. You know what I mean? All right, so. Again, Mercury comes out of the shadow of the retrograde November 2nd, but Venus enters the shadow of the, of the retrograde November 18th. Now, what this means is there is a window of opportunity. There is a, a, a time when neither Venus nor Mercury are in the shadow, and this is the time for uh, start new projects. We don't start a new project 
under a retrograde Mercury or a retrograde Venus. Especially um, with Venus, we don't get married during a retrograde love, <laughs> a retrograde Venus, because Venus rules love and money and happiness, um, because you have to redo it or it, it fizzles out and you don't want that. But when it's in the um, shadow, it's, it's like a second chance, in my opinion, to tie up those loose ends that you have not, that you didn't tie up when everything was retro. So between November 2nd and November 18th, it's home for y'all, all right? All right, now, if you have not yet gotten a copy of my latest astrology book, Hidden Messages in Your Birth Chart, uh, you might want to get a copy. It will open your eyes to your family programming, meaning your programming from your family. So let's look and see where the planets are for this month. All right. The sun, the giver of life, the center of our solar system is in the most powerful sign, I think, Scorpio. And Scorpio's mantra is to be afraid and not to care that I am afraid is the courage of which Scorpio is made. Kind of gives, gives you goosebumps, doesn't it? I love it. All right, so things are very tense when, um, the sun is in Scorpio. On the 21st, the sun moves into high flying. I want my freedom. I'm telling it like it is. Sagittarius, totally different energy. Um, and that will be, as I said, on the 21st. Okay. Venus, the planet of love and money and beauty, the lesser benefic, is in Sagittarius. It wants to be free in all of its love relationships. On the fifth, Venus moves into practical, logical. Um, I work hard. I move slowly up the ladder. And I appreciate the value of the dollar, Capricorn. And so it goes from high flying, sad to practical, logical. Can this person provide me with money? Capricorn. Now, Mercury races ahead. Mercury starts off the month in lovely Libra. Now, Mercury deals with our conscious mind. And so people are confused during this time uh, because they can see both sides of every picture. So, and, and they are charming. So, Mercury is in Libra till the fifth, and then it moves into Scorpio. So the conscious mind is in Scorpio, the, the psychic detective of the Zodiac. It gives me chills uh, to think about it. It's, it's so powerful. Um, all right, Mercury's in Libra. Who, that says the right thing at the right time to the right person. Political correctness is Libra's middle name. On the fifth, it moves into, I'm keeping quiet. I'm not sharing anybody's secrets, especially my own Scorpio. And then on the 24th, it joins the sun in high flying, uh, laugh at life, philosophical Sagittarius. I love it. Now Mars, I love Mars. Because uh, Mars is action. Mars is energy. Mars um, is what you, it's what you fight with and fight for. It's what you throw yourself into. It's what you make number one. The sun is the center of your universe, our universe. Mars says, this is what comes first to me. This is what I'm willing to fight for or with. It's in Scorpio, its own sign. And so it is very powerful. A planet in its own sign um, is mega power. 
And Scorpio, the sign of secrets, the sign of transformation, the sign of magic. Well, Mars co-rules Scorpio. Pluto co-rules Scorpio. I love it. So, pretty powerful. Now, let's talk about the new moon and the full moon. Now, you know, on the new moon, that's when energy starts flowing. That's when we uh, get off our duff and move forward. The new moon is on November 4th. Notice how a lot of stuff is beginning. We begin the month with it, um, 2 a.m., whether November 6th or 7th, no more Eastern daylight time. The shadow, Mercury ends the shadow, uh, comes out of the shadow, November 2nd. Venus moves into the shadow, November 18th. It's just, woo. All right, new moon, 5.15 p.m. Eastern daylight time. It's in 12 degrees, 40 minutes of Scorpio. Find, uh, just round up, 13 degrees of Scorpio. Find that in your birth chart because that's where the energy starts flowing. It starts moving forward. The full moon is when it comes to a head. Yeehaw. And it bears fruit. Now, this is not just a full moon. This is a lunar eclipse. And if you ever have, which you will, and you may right now, if this full moon in 27 of Taurus, okay, happens to fall on your sun, your moon, or your ascendant, then this eclipse is vitally important for you because it is a new life eclipse. It's not a new chapter, it's a whole new book. I love um, an eclipse that falls uh, on either your sun, your moon, or your ascendant, because it does, first of all, it lasts at least a year, much longer than a normal eclipse lasts. And it is it ushers in many changes. Okay, find 27 Taurus in your birth chart, because that is where this full moon slash lunar eclipse will bring things to a head. I love it. Bring it to a head to be dealt with, yes. And normally we feel the effects of an eclipse most strongly three to four months after it occurs. But we still feel it until the next pair of eclipses come along. And they're either in pairs or they can actually be in threes, okay? So the full moon on November 19th brings things to a big head. I mean, truly, it's not a new chapter. It's a whole book. I love it. And of course, it's on standard time by then. All right. Let's talk about where the full moon lands in your solar chart. Now find 28 Taurus in your birth chart because that's when where this eclipse will fall, all right? And take aspect to the planets, uh, all the planets and see if you have any aspects that you love or any that you don't love because on the full moon, things come to a head. All right. Now, let's go around the zodiac and talk about where this 27 Taurus full moon lands in your solar chart. I'm gonna start with Taurus 
because it's in Taurus, 27 Taurus. All righty. So, Taurus, this full moon slash lunar eclipse says, do what you want, when you want, how you want, because you want. It's your turn. And so you are going to step forward. You know, Taurus, the bull, I can see it charging. Just all of a sudden starting to leap forward on this full moon. So see, see where it falls in your birth chart, combine it with its position in your solar chart, which is the first house of me. And you will see that you have impatience because you are ready to get going. Gemini, this eclipse says, pull back, retreat, get out of sight and work behind the scenes. Cancerians, this eclipse says, and remember it's a full moon. Um, I wanna be with my friends. I want to socialize. I wanna leave the house and party. Cool. Leo, this full moon, this eclipse helps you move upward in your career. It puts you in a position of leadership and you can deal with leaders, whether family members or business associates. Virgo, this particular full moon lunar eclipse has you standing back and seeing a big picture. Now, normally you deal with, cross those T's, dot, theirs, dot those I's, you deal with the small details of every project. This one has you saying, go for it. Make it a big picture. And so you're seeing principles rather than just big ideas. It's wonderful. You might, if you're in school, you might change your major. Okay? Remember, it's an eclipse. All right. Libra, this helps you get into secrets and find out what's really going on. You can help other people with their finances and their values. This is terrific. Scorpio, this is a time to emphasize in your life the one-on-one -on -one relationship. It's partnership. It's getting with other people one-on-one. -on -one. And so you may be drawn to the one-on-one -on -one relationship. That's cool. Sagittarius. Time to spread your wings and soar. This will heal your body and can present to you a new job. Yes. Capricorn, it's time to party. You are ready to have fun. And if you have children, uh, your oldest child will want your attention. But it is time to party. I love that. Aquarius, wow. This eclipse falls in your fourth house of home, family, and real estate. Now, um, you're able to see things very objectively, and this is a very uh, emotional placement for the sun or the moon, in this case, the moon, of course. Um, so watch yourself, and if you need to... Uh, sit down with somebody wiser than you to get information, go for it, okay? And let's see. Pisces, the beauty of Pisces on this full moon is that you are able to express yourself magnificently, which comes easily to you. And you're going to express you you're going to express your ideas, not somebody else's, even though you love partnership. So there you have it, dear friends. What a wonderful month. I do want to mention that when Mercury and Venus are both retrograde, which they will be next month in December, um, it, things are a little weird. So please join me next month when once again, 
I take a look at the overview. Um, and if you would like uh, to learn more about yourself, just watch the video of your sun sign. Um, some of you have asked, should I also look at the video of my rising sign? Yes, because the rising sign is often stronger than the sun sign. So yes, use this as a learning tool. In fact, use your chart as your greatest learning tool. And if you'd like a reading, of course, just go to my website, MaxineTaylor.com. So join me next month when once again, I take a look at your forecast. This is all about you. Don't you love it? So my blessing as always is May the stars shine brightly on you and yours. Goodbye for now.